Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Today we're going to be talking about uh, indeterminate structures, and we're going to be doing a quick, pretty straightforward example on the force method, which is also known as the method of consistent deformations. Okay, so you'll probably see this. This is some third year content. You're starting to get into structures that don't have equal number of reactions to a number of equations. And uh, I'm going to show you a pretty simple example, and then maybe we could do a, a more complicated one after. This is just to get the idea of uh, the force method, okay? So what the force method involves, okay, is, uh, is first taking a look at the structure that you're given, okay? In this case, we have a beam. And we, first of all, the first thing we always want to do is count the number of reactions on the beam, okay? So here we have a fixed support, okay? So as you know, we have an X reaction, a Y reaction, and a moment reaction. And at B, we have a vertical reaction, okay? So that means total we have four reactions. And as you know, we can always, in a, in a beam, only have three uh, equations of equilibrium. So we have the sum of the forces in X, the sum of the forces in Y, and the moment. Okay, so the sum of the moments equals zero. So what that means is that we have more unknowns than we have equations, which makes this an indeterminate structure. Okay, uh, what we're going to do with this problem is we're going to use the force method. So uh, in the case where we only have one more reaction or one more uh, reaction than we have uh, equations, or we have one more unknown, so we have uh, four unknowns and only three equations. Okay, so that means what is the decree degree of our determinants? Indeterminacy. So first degree indeterminate. Okay, so that means that we're going to need to select a support, okay, and we're going to need to make it redundant, okay, and what that is going to mean is that we're going to have to replace that redundant uh, support with a unit force, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and do that, and in this question we're going to select B as our redundant force, okay, and that's just going to give us a fixed cantilever beam, okay. So let's go ahead, and the first step to these problems is you're going to first right out. So we've taken B and we've selected it as a redundant force. So we've removed that, uh, that support and we're just going to draw the cantilever beam without B. Okay. So that's going to be our first, the force and with the loads, the real loads still applied to the beam. Okay. So this is still 15. Okay. B is no longer there. Okay. And our elastic curve is going to look like this. Okay. So that's the shape that the deflection will take under that load. And this is C. Okay. Perfect. Now, we still have point B here, okay? And now we have a deflection right here, okay? That deflection is caused uh, by the real loading. And we are going to name this deflection BO, okay? So this is called delta BO, okay? Perfect. So that's the first part of the question, okay? So now we need to draw a second system here. Okay, where we remove we remove the the load that's uh, that's acting on the beam, okay, and we replace that load with a uh, uh, so we replace the reaction that would be here, okay, so which would be upwards uh, with a one kilonewton unit load, okay, and uh, we so we remove the the loading and uh, the external loading and we replace the redundant force with a one kilonewton uh, force. So that's what we've done here, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and always make sure you draw the elastic curve. It really does give you a, a good a visual representation of what's going on in the question. Okay, we're gonna label that FBB. Okay, so we have FBB, we have delta BO, okay? And well, what do we do now, okay? So what we do now is we need to understand the, uh, the compatibility equations, the, what the equations that we need in order to solve uh, this problem. Okay, so if we had two, a second degree indeterminacy, we would have two formulas. Uh, for a first degree indeterminacy, we only have one, we, we only need one additional set uh, equation in order to solve the system. Okay, so uh, I'll just write that out for you. So, okay, we have the deflection at the point B, which is caused by the loading. So delta, and I'll just label this compatibility equations. Okay, so we have delta BO, so we start with the deflection due to the loading, okay? And that is going to be plus uh, the deflection caused by the unit load, which is FBB, times uh, the reaction, reactionary force, okay, which is BY, 
and that has to be equal to zero, okay? I'm not gonna get into the proof. Uh, I, I'm sure you're here just because you wanna see how to solve the problem. So this, is, uh, this here is the equation, okay? that we're going to need to, uh, to plug in stuff in order to solve for our reaction, okay? So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to find BO, delta BO, and we need to find FBB. And we're gonna do that by using deflection equations, okay? So go to your deflection table and, uh, and look for the cases in which these exist, okay? So in, uh, in this question here, we have a deflection that's upwards, okay? So that's gonna be positive. And what we're going to do is write out the formula Okay, so we'll say FBB, okay, is equal to, and I'm using uh, the deflection formula for a point load on a cantilevered beam, and that is going to be P over 6EI, okay? So uh, if we go ahead and we plug the values into this equation for, for uh, this one here, okay? Uh, we have P as one kilonewton, okay? We have E and I, uh, they're constant, so we'll just leave those as EI. X is going to be this distance here, okay, X, right? And A is, in this case, equal to X, okay? So A is equal to X, so this is just going to also be uh, the distance to here, which is seven, okay? So if we go ahead and plug seven in for A and X and P, we are going to arrive at a deflection of 114.33 and uh, kilonewton meter cube per kilonewton uh, and that on the bottom of that will be EI okay perfect so just leave the EI in there okay because EI is constant and now let's do the uh, the real loading scenario for the deflection so that formula is a little bit longer actually but I can write it out for you if you'd like so we have delta BO, okay, that is equal to W over 24 EI, okay? And uh, if we take all the values from this one and we plug 15 in here, we plug A, which is the distance to B. So we're trying to evaluate the deflection at B. So this is X, this distance here is X, okay? And A in this case will be the entire uh, span of the beam, okay? This is A because that's just where the, uh, the uniform uh, load acts. If we plug all those values into here, I'll let you do that on your own, see if you get the same answer as me. We're gonna get a negative value, uh, 225,510.625 over EI. And I'm not gonna include the units this time, they're the same units there. Okay, and now all we really have to do, okay, is plug these values into this equation and solve for BY. Okay. So we're going to be left with negative 25510.625 over EI plus, and FBB was 114.33 over EI times BY equals zero. Okay. As you can see right now, the EIs cancel, so there was no real point in having those numbers anyway. As long as the EI are constant, they're gonna cancel. And if we just solve this really simple equation for BY, we are going to get that BY is equal to 223.1 kilonewton up. There we go, okay? Perfect. So at, from this point in the equation, uh, from the question now, okay, we have the value of the reaction at BY. And what does this mean? This means now that the beam, okay, looks something like this. Okay, so we still have our load here. But instead of an unknown at B, now we have a force or a point load of 23.1 kilonewton. So now we have a system in which we have three unknowns. So we have, let's say, AX, AY, and M, uh, we'll say MA. Okay, and we have three uh, unknowns and we have three equations. And now this is a determinant structure that we can solve using normal uh, formulas like sum of uh, forces in X, sum of forces in Y, and sum of moments equals to zero. So uh, I'm not going to solve the rest. I'm not going to draw the shear moment diagram. You guys know how to solve this. If you want to practice, you can. Um, but that is how you use the method of consistent deformations in order to solve a first degree indeterminate structure. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.